back with Dr. Rob. He's been on the show before talking about breast implant illness, and that was an absolutely great podcast. So I wanted to bring him back because we we wanted to separate these two topics, totally different topic. All of you know that I'm huge into anti-aging. I am a big, big proponent of doing things that make you feel better about you. So if that is plastic surgery, I am all for it. We are going to talk about the no-cut facelift. So this is going to be a game changer for you. And you can probably hear the excitement in my voice. The latest introduction, the latest member of the family to the fixer line is metabolism fixer. And this, oh my God, I formulated this just for all my people out there that need to lose weight, that need help in the weight loss department, that can't lose weight no matter what they do, that feel like they have a slow metabolism And it might be thinking of trying all those peptides out there. You know, the Beverly Hills soccer mom drug of choice for weight loss peptides. Or even if you're on them already and you're like, man, these are really expensive and I'm still not losing weight. Add in metabolism fixer. Here's what I did. I took the power of T2, which increases your basal metabolic rate while you are sitting there watching Netflix. You're burning fat while you're watching Netflix. I combined it with a very unique patented ingredient called Suppressa. Suppressa has multiple clinical trials backing its efficacy in reducing your appetite, decreasing snacking, and providing way more control over your food intake. It is amazing. We also see improved emotional well-being, just decreased food cravings all around, reduced hunger, and weight management. Add on top of that, we have green tea extract, we have purple forest purple tea extract, both of which affect the metabolism in a very positive way without the jitters of normal fat burning supplements out there from the 1980s and 90s, right? The ones that made you feel like you're having a heart attack. You will not have that in any of my supplements, thyroid fixer or metabolism fixer. But metabolism fixer, ooh, yeah, we kicked it up a notch. It is in powder form, so you can drink it through your day. It's gonna flavor your water. We got orange crush and refreshing citrus. I love them both. It is going to keep you under control all day long. So you throw a couple scoops in your water bottle in the morning, throw a scoop or two in your water bottle throughout the day. You will have fat burning and appetite control the entire day for what? An eighth of a price of the peptides? Oh my God, you can't go wrong. So grab some metabolism fixer today. Please let me know how you do on it. I am super excited for you. Super excited. This is proprietary. Dr. Rob designed it, developed it, does it, kicks ass at it. And so I'm just going to turn it over to him to tell you more about it. We're just going to get into a great conversation. So Dr. Rob, hi. Thanks for coming back on. Thank you for having me, Dr. Horneman. I'm going to change how your face ages forever, and we'll let the audience know today how to do it. So everybody's probably heard of microneedling, and they've heard of facelifting, and oh, yeah. they may have even heard of some of the technologies like radio frequency technologies, face tight, act tight that we use on the face to really slow down facial aging. But really, it's a spectrum. And when you know everybody comes in the office, they want to know what can they do to avoid a facelift? And this is where things like the neurotoxins, like classically like Botox and most recently Daxify were used to relax lines Mm -hmm. um, by just blocking neurotransmission. And then later on in the 2000s, you had facial fillers and Restylane was, you know, the initial filler and those added volume with hyaluronic acid. Sometimes too much volume. Yep. That's why people look freaky, right? (laughs) Always been very cognizant of having extremely natural looking appearances. I I won't over volumize a face or a lip or a cheek. I always feel like, although you're you're filling, um, you're not exactly doing anything to prevent the process, which is aging and loss of collagen, loss of elasticity. And if you don't do anything for that, you're just gonna keep filling and then you're gonna get some of these really bizarre looking people. So, I began like a little mission of mine in 2016, and I just kept adding skin tightening technologies that I thought would be the best. And I use uh, bipolar radio frequency skin tightening technology 
I use face tights. I was the first person in Austin to have a morphosic microneedling. Yep. So we'll, we'll break those up. The deeper tissues you can tighten with bipolar radio frequency, which I do a lot. You can do the cheeks and the zones of the neck and the submental area. I was say, so stop there and give people, what would they know that as? Like what, so what's being called, advertised? Is that the skin tight? Face tight. Face yeah. tight. Yep. Face tight is the initial one that I had starting out in 2016. And so I've done probably a thousand cases with face tight mm-hmm. and way more with Morpheus 8 because it's a much more common treatment modality. Morpheus 8 to me is a tremendous builder of collagen. I think in, in full disclosure, although it's a phenomenal collagen builder, if I did it to your face, you wouldn't see a visible change. You would feel things and the texture may be better over time and it would build more collagen because that's exactly, to me, it's wheelhouse. Mm-hmm. So now I have something from a company and it's called Alicor and it's become a key part of my no cut face lift. So in no short order, I can take your whole face under local in the office and lift all the skin away from the, the fatty tissue of the, the cheek, the neck, tighten the neck, and then do basically the no cut procedure, which is to tighten the cheeks with face tight, the zones of the neck with face tight, because there's really three zones of the neck that I concentrate on. And then the cheeks, you don't need to be right up against the folds because there's a, a nerve near the jawline. You don't want to bother that. So you tighten out a little bit lateral on the cheek. But then instead of doing Morpheus 8, which I had traditionally done in my smart face lifts, now I do in my no-cut face lifts, removal of skin with Elicor. So Elicor is microcoring technology. So it's a hollow tip needle, but it's so small. It's 0.5 millimeters. It heals without a scar. You can do it on the face, which is FDA cleared for and kind of the distribution of my beard. And of course, off-label everywhere else. And so just like most plastic surgeons, my whole world is off-label. So I want to make sure that I provide everybody the best uh, possible anti-aging solutions. So to me, when I first heard about it about five years ago, I was like, wow, if that ever comes to fruition, that's going to be awesome. Because that's the next step closest to a facelift. Because a facelift removes skin, you know, laterally up against the ear. And that's your point of fixation typically. Right. Um, people can look windswept. They can look like they have a hook in their mouth. And yeah. as the facelift ages, it's independent of the mid face usually. So they'll look different. It, it won't look harmonious. In this method, the no cut method, it can't look unnatural because you're tightening everywhere. All It's not a vector in one direction or another. It's just being taken out. So it's tightening up against your natural structures like, you know, the mandible the cheekbones. So it looks really interesting to me because when people are lax, they kind of look deflated. But if you take away their loose skin, they look volumized. So let me speak to the the general population. So ladies, this is when you're looking in the mirror and and you're doing the pullback, right? You're grabbing the sides of your face and you're pulling it back and you go, I really want to look like that. Well, no, you don't. What you're saying basically is that you've lost fat, you've lost volume because that's what happens as we age. And then everything is just hanging down. So there's, Rob, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but you, you're you losing the fat pad, you're losing the fat in your face and the skin is becoming more lax because we're losing collagen and elastin. So that's where we get the gels. That's why women are picking their faces up, walking around, holding their, their skin up to their ears because that's what they want the look to be. Yeah, we can have bone loss. Which- oh, okay which is far less than than you would expect, but you can have some bone loss. You can have fatty loss, but really, if you just add those two up, plus you have loose skin, then you got a major problem. Yeah. So with this technique, you can solve, you know, lots of issues at one time. So I can tighten the deeper tissues and that stimulates a lot of collagen synthesis, a lot of elastin synthesis. Mm -hmm. And then the last bit, when you start taking skin out all over, it's really exciting because I don't like scarring. I'm a plastic surgeon, so I'm always you know, principally trying to hide everything. So nobody knows anything that I did. And it's easy for me ever since I was a little kid to pick up things that don't look right, that aren't natural. Yeah. And so I don't ever, you know, if somebody comes in with a, with a, you know, a facelift that's obviously not done well over time, it's a bit sad that 
you know, that happened. But this technique is a great way to help offset what's now disharmonious aging. But if we started 35 plus with things to stimulate collagen formation, as we got older, we did something like a no cut or an isolated treatment where I just took out skin. It doesn't matter. I've done this on the face, the forehead, around the cheeks, the neck. I've done arms. I've done the breasts, abdomen, forearms. For, oh, so age spots, right? Dark spots, you can do IPL and take rid of get rid right. of. But you've seen people have those little white spots. Yeah. This will help take those down. And oh out. That's crazy. So any it's loose skin, crazy. any of that creepy very skin. Very distracting. <laughs> when I see things like that, I'm like, what's wrong with you? Why do you have that? And so I want to take care of that stuff. And people who grew up in the sun or on the coast of California or Texas or Florida all have stuff like that, yep. whether it's dark pigment or hypopigmentation, or they were water skiers and grew up on a lake or, or whatever. And I'm like, it always distracts me. I'm like, man, that person may look really not their age and they're vigorous, but that makes you look like you've aged a lot. Hands are the gateway, right? Your hands, they'll start aging and look really bad. I put the fluid in and I can just take a millimeter or two uh, again out in these patterns and really okay. tighten the back of the hand. Oh, yeah. I'm looking at my hand now. Uh-huh. Okay. Really there's not a place that's really off limits. Over bones, we have to be careful and I adjust settings. And the companies, I spoke with them recently, and I want to do work around the eyes because the eyes really, even though I've done eyes for a long time surgically, I would like to find a nice you know, safe, efficient method to do it non-surgically in a minimally invasive way to add to this because the treatment element is bigger than you want to use around the eye. I can use it almost everywhere else, you know, backs and knees and things that are just super problematic. I have a great cellulite treatment, but this treats stretch marks. Nothing's ever treated a stretch mark. This will actually take down a stretch mark and make it far less visible than if you do it over and over again. You'll, you'll really make it more imperceptible rather than, oh, it's all wide. And uh, things like acne scoring, which are extremely stigmatizing. Mm -hmm. You can really affect acne scoring for the first time in a way that's not going to leave a new scar. Because lasering, lasering doesn't take care of acne scarring. Like a laser, if you look at a Cosmo magazine, right? It, yep. uh, how many pages thick? A laser takes like 10 pages down. So it's not doing much. No. And it's a lot of downtime typically. This, I've got the downtime squashed down to five to seven days before you can be back on camera. Four days, five days before makeup's on, covering it up. So we use exosomes to help reduce that. We have a, a skincare regimen. I have my esthetician see each patient right afterwards. So the people that have flown in from out of state that need to go back and be on camera right away, we have them stay and see them you know, after the treatment and 48 hours after the treatment and another 48 hours so that we're on top of their skincare, because really you can't do much. You have to do like a gentle cleanser. And then I have a specific regimen that I follow with products that I trust greatly from Elastin. And, and it, to me, it's, you know, I don't, I've talked to you about this before. There's not much that excites me in plastic surgery anymore because it's just been surgery for a long time. I, right. I like things that will minimize scarring and minimize downtime and recovery time, but maximize results and still make you you know, retain your natural beauty and let you age the way you want to age. And it's, you know, intentional in nature. I find it fascinating. I mean, if I wasn't doing what I'm doing, I I, I would go back and be a plastic surgeon. Or I, if I could rewind time, that's what I would do. I just find it fascinating of what we can now do with people for people to really give them that confidence back. And I think that plastic surgery in general, we'll just put it under that big umbrella. It's like self-care and really caring about how you look. But it's lost its its stigma. It's more accepted now because you're doing things to, we're doing all this biohacking, right? We're jumping in cold plunges. We're doing the infrared saunas. We're doing the red light therapy. This is just one more step in the whole biohacking game, the whole anti-aging game. What's the point? And I've always said this. What's the point in me reaching 85 or 100 if I look like shit? And I don't even feel good. Like I want to look in the mirror and feel like the youthful person that's inside. And so the outside has to match the inside. So this is super exciting. I mean, just beyond exciting. I know I mean, one thing going through my mind, how do you take skin without cutting skin? So if you remember, microneedling just pokes holes. So like you're right. aerating the lawn. Right. Solid. 
so your body will heal down any kind of injury. Think of like an IV you get, you know, you get a, a vitamin infusion. That's a venipuncture and it's healed and it's gone. You can't see it. And it's within a you know few days, really. But this is a hollow needle. It's connected to a mechanism with suction. And so as it strikes and goes in, I set the depths between two and four millimeters, depending on where I'm working. And the suction helps remove it at the same time. And it has a pattern, you know, think of like a, a grid that's one centimeter by one centimeter. And I can take out 8%, 7%, 5% of that grid, and then just keep lining it up. So lasers have grids and you see them make their patterns. And this is a real, you know, extraction pattern. And so your body, instead of filling in the micropuncture from a needle that's solid, this is actually a hollow, but under 0.5 millimeters, which is its diameter, it heals without a visible scar. Wow. Leveraging a very simple thing that your body always does. Right. It heals that diameter without a linear scar, right? We're just talking about linear visible scarring. And so when yeah. you see acne scar, it's usually a pock that's pretty big. And so if I can take down that, you know, by 30%, 20% and do it successively, you'll just change exactly how that person looks. I mean, and it's not anything that's going to be visible to the outside world, but it'll make a huge difference to that person. A stretch mark. Women grow and reach skeletal maturity in junior high. Mm -hmm. My wife's 5'10", and she's got stretch marks because she grew like a foot in junior high. Right. And, and that's very stigmatized. It bothers people, and it's they didn't do anything wrong. They just that's, they grew. Right. And so for the first time, I combined that treatment with my cellulite treatment, which is very on point and you can tighten that whole hip thigh area you can do like the really bad grapey skin on the anterior thigh that gets people really upset and they don't yep. want to wear shorts or skirts and you can really affect that now we're always kind of off limits to me like i i would tell you hey i mean i don't have anything for that and anybody who tells you is full of it right oh well, i do now you do person from south america to dallas that has it that's crazy. So any kind of weight loss, and I know, you know, a lot of the listeners have already gone through the journey of getting optimized in their hormones, and now they've lost the weight that they were gaining. Well, now you got the loose skin, right? Yeah. Because as we age, that skin isn't going to spring back when you lose those 20, 50 pounds. So this is really exciting that it can be done on, I mean, yeah, of course the face, but on all parts of the body that we see that creepiness occur, especially with weight loss. And I stopped doing open arm lifting brachioplasty a long time ago because I can't stand how it looks. It's an awful... Why? Is there a big scar? Oh. Yeah. It's horrendous. So I stopped doing that three years ago, four years ago, and I only did minimally invasive arm lifts, and I still only do them. But so now, and I had very good results with that, but now these results are 30 or 40 or 50% better because you're taking skin out. And then say, for instance, I do it and there's still a little bit of laxity as it comes towards the axilla because that's the area that typically is a problem as it reaches the armpit. You can redo that now just under a little bit of local and you keep tightening it. So like things that were not reproducible, like you wouldn't re redo a brachioplasty typically, just like I don't like redoing facelift. So there's because there's no linear scar, you can just go back over the area. And I do all this under local in my office. I've done all my facelifts under local. I do 360 lipo under local. I do fat grafting to the breast or face under local. So it's, for me, this is just like a natural thing to do to add it to what I already did. So we can do no cut facelift, breast lift, arm lift, knee lift, thigh lift, butt lift, whatever you want. And it's all basically going to be under local. In office, and yeah. Metabolization of general anesthesia. If someone wants to take, you know, a sedative orally, that's fine. We have nitrous, laughing gas, and most people just want to like hang out. Yeah. You know? If you're if you're on your tummy, I just let you know. I put Apple TV on, and let you watch something. Right. Yeah, just chill out. But I think that's the big point is that you know, general anesthesia. I mean, for those who might be thinking about this, but they've never been through any kind of surgery and don't really even know the difference, general anesthesia has with it a, a host of other risks. And yes, you are going, you are getting that, that dose of anesthesia that, I mean, anybody that's had it, you know, it stays in your system. I don't know what the hell it's doing inside of me, but I feel like crap for a couple of days. Uh, so if you can do a surgery where you avoid that 
and and tell the people too, this isn't something to really be scared of. I think a lot of people are thinking, oh my gosh, I'm going to be awake for this. Are you kidding? Oh, no, no, I don't want to be awake. But really they're very minimal pain and you're numbing the area as well. Yeah, we use basically bicarbonate makes the local anesthesia that we provide. It's not going to sting or burn because local anesthesia stings and burns because it's acidic. So you add bicarbonate to buffer it out. And basically because of COVID, they wouldn't let me operate in Texas at a surgery center for about almost three months. And so I basically had to do everything I could when it was appropriate at my office. And it was fine because I'll look back on it and I lost my father during COVID, but it forced me to learn a lot of things business-wise and help you know care for my patients differently and really expand what I did under local. And now it's, you know, it's just like standard for us. We're like, you know, if we're doing faces or isolated arms or abdomens and and we can combine areas and do things, people are a lot more comfortable coming to and from on their own because I let that happen under local because there's, mm-hmm. you haven't had anything. It's just local anesthesia. It's totally mm-hmm. safe. And they like that. And in terms of someone getting anxious, if someone baseline is anxious, then of course, it's better to have a ride and have a sedative because that's just, anxiety is normal with things. So sure. it's okay. So we understand that. And, you know, if it was my son or daughter, I'd have to give them something because their they're baseline, none of them are going to be doctors. I guarantee that. <laughs> they're sweet kids, but they're a little anxious about anything to do with the body. <laughs> so. Right. And hey, some people are like that and that's okay. Yeah. But there are ways to handle it. There are ways that you can deal with it when they are in office. And I love that people can fly in because, you know, that's the thing. I mean, to see the best, sometimes you got to travel. And, and I love that you have this plan where, yeah, you can, you stay a couple of days. We got this mapped out, you know, we got you covered with the skincare and the whole deal. The reason why I want to talk about it on here is because I am into anti-aging and biohacking. And I just think this is such a great alternative because the whole facelift is so invasive and such a long recovery. This is such a beautiful option for everyone. And the fact, I mean, I didn't learn about you being able to do it on the body until we talked off camera today. That is incredible. So I really, I'm hoping that that people out there, my listeners out there that might be struggling with a little bit of confidence issues. And like you said, you know, we, we tend to focus on those areas, whether it's a stretch mark or acne scarring or loose skin, and just know that there is another alternative. When I first was uh, given, you know, the presentation by the company through their slide deck, I know what their FD clearance was because I saw it when I was president of the research foundation, I kept seeing it come through and I knew it was in process and I knew it was for the face. And it's like, when I saw it, you know, actually I was like, well, this has much broader application. This fills in, you know, blanks for a lot of things that I've always said, I will not do. I don't do uh, body lifts anymore because of the scarring. I don't do thigh lifts anymore because of the scarring. I will really avoid doing tummy tucks because of the amount of scarring, the, the linear scarring is, is just... Could this take the place? Like if someone really has that much loose skin from either, you know, pregnancy or weight loss, can you do enough with it with a no cut? Yeah, necessarily what you would do, it depends, obviously. If there's a lot of overhanging tissue, then I'd have to, to see exactly, you know, an exam. But if you looked at what I would do in my smart tummy cases, I would do liposculpture, tightening with body tight, which is a larger skin tightening device. And then I would do microneedling. And I would get pretty startling results of areas. And that's with no skin removal. But now I can take skin out. So serially, if you just add up how much skin you're removing, yes, you would endpoint the same. It just would take X number of times. Right. But the answer would always end up the same, right? It's just a mathematical equation. Unlike a tummy, if you said, oh, you know what, I lost, like you said, 30 or 40 or 50 pounds, and now I have kind of circumferential laxity. Well, this is ideally suited for that versus a body lift, because nobody wants a body lift anyway. If you're smart, you don't want a body lift. That's Lots of scars, lots of downtime. Awful. And so you'll disrupt your vascularity, lymphatic drainage. You'll always have visible scarring with a body lift, where this doesn't do any of that. Right. And your frequency doesn't disrupt lymphatic drainage, it actually can enhance it. So in areas that have been already treated, you can use it. And so to me, it's just like, and people will say, oh, you're the non-plastic surgeon, plastic surgeon. I was like, no, I mean, I just want to do what the best option is that gives you the results with no loss of, 
you know, I hate visible scarring. Yeah. You know, I do lipo. I just like hide everything. Like you'll never look at my patient and figure out where it was done. Right. They can go That's on the beach awesome. anytime and be totally confident. They're not going to have little poke holes and scars and things because it's all extremely well hidden and that's how it should be you should know but nobody else should yeah exactly i want to pick your brain too about a couple other procedures and i know this has been a big question on my listeners mind botox fillers and autoimmune conditions so we've, we've talked about the you know downside of fillers is that you can look overfilled you can just look to have that fake look obviously a, a a Botox injector that doesn't know what they're doing. You can get any, everything from ptosis, drooping of the eyelid to just that that Spock look. How safe are those? I mean, now they have the alternative method of the no cut, but let's say somebody just wants to run down the street and get some Botox, but they don't know if it's good for them or not with Hashi and with autoimmune. Yeah, I think what we're going to transition to is DAX supply. It's that's Daxy botulinum toxin. It lasts about six months. And so you're really reducing your frequency over time. And, you know, that in combination with what we've been discussing with no cut, you can probably, it's not like you could ever eliminate that because there will be lines developed from us animating and muscular activity. What I think in the end game will happen as you diminish laxity is that you'll diminish your need to keep using neurotoxin in as much of a dose, if that makes sense, because... Mm -hmm. If you control laxity better, you won't have as many lines of animation. So whether it's horizontal from furrowing or squinting, you know, crow's feet. And women get very upset with marionette lines around their mouth, you know, because they're right. classic called smoker lines. But yeah. as you get older and you go through menopause, your dermis thins because estrogen goes down. And that is why lines become more visible. I know y'all aren't smoking as much or at all. <laughs> right now, right. And this no cut technique actually can minimize the visible lines. People come to me and like, oh, I want you to inject all this toxin around my mouth. I'm like, no, you don't. You <laughs> don't really understand. Like, that's not what you do around a mouth because you can have discord movement of your mouth after that. And I've seen that. And I can't fix that. I did so, that one time, of like a lip. Oh, my God. It was so weird. I couldn't talk. I'll never do it again. That was horrible. Lift. Oh, let's talk about this. The bullhorn lip lift. Okay, so I'm 53. I started right. operating in 1996. And that operation was in vogue. And it quickly yeah. went out. Because there's no way to hide the scar. It's like a very, you know, it's uh, bell bottoms are back. You know, it's like one of those things that recycles. It's a, when I think about it, I'm like, why would I want to cut the bottom of Amy's nose and lip? I can't really, I can't come to that conclusion because it doesn't make any sense. But I can take this device, and I've done it, and do a lip lift with it. Can you really? Oh, my God. Yeah, That's because amazing. you can rows out, and then you just keep doing it. So you can turn the lip up, and then you're never going to have that scar under the nose, which never looks good over time. Like, what your audience needs to understand is, as a plastic surgeon, every time I make a scar, that is a forever scar. Right. A linear scar doesn't change. Can I make them lovely and fine yes my goal in life is always to do that and yes i can do it but your genetics you know nobody knows uh how their genetics would be you didn't pick your parents right how you eat how you sleep what you drink those things all go into that so this takes that out of the equation because this doesn't produce a linear scar it's just taking out these small bits and you know, it's a very clever, very elegant, and, and you know, the best things in life are the simplest things. Yep. That is a very simple and eloquent technique when combined with all, what I already did really gets me that much closer to the gold standard of a facelift, which, you know, I can remove about a square inch of skin per side with this technique, a square inch. Yeah, that's huge. So I you're mean... just doing that based on what you need. Maybe you need one. If you need three. It and there's no strings going in. Like you're not putting stuff in and pulling back like those threads and all yeah, that kind of stuff. threading. So like threading to me is it, it's a it's a pain in my ass because when I go to do this, I have to go through all the scar created by that and all the scars created by fractional lasering fillers. Mm -hmm. And So the easiest phase for me to take care of is a face that hasn't had any of that because it will separate normally the way I do it. And then I can tighten it more 
whether it's neck, jawline, because I have something called a zoom lift to just tighten around the jawline and help the neck. Mm -hmm. I combine it with all of this. So it's really, I don't have to open necks anymore. Even if I did a facelift, I don't open the neck anymore, which means I don't perform a corset platysmoplasty. I don't put the platysma deck back together in the middle. I do what's called a zoom lift and folks can go and look it up, but it's a percutaneous neck lift. And then I combine it with all these other things, face tights, and then I do the Elicor treatment. And that's my no cut technique, which is just, I always feel like if you're going to do something, you need to understand and your audience needs, audience needs to understand if somebody just has one device, they're only going to sell you that device because that's right. all they can do. Right. I've spent several million dollars of my own money figuring out which ones work the best. Yeah. So I've done that trial and error for you. Like you can walk down my hall and there's a lot of pretty boxes down that hall. <laughs> yeah. All very expensive. Right. I mean, I've come to the conclusion I, I swap out what works the best. I mean, I don't, I'm not stuck anywhere. Mm -hmm. I, if it's the best thing to have, I will. You got it. The best right. to have it. That's, and technology is changing so much with all the the treatments out there. So that's nice to know that you stay on top of it. I need some AI version of me soon. I'll get replaced. No, no, you still need your skill. You still need your skill. No AI, not not for that at least. AI can write write a write an Instagram post, but not for that. <laughs> <laughs> so Dr. Rob, what do you think about Renuva? Do you combine that? Because oftentimes with the loss of fat, you want to replace sometimes doing, you know, like you said, the fat grafting or just taking fat from wherever and putting it in the face. Now with this Renuva, which I've heard of, but I have not done yet, it can actually stimulate your own fat. Yeah. What I've gone to doing, because most of my research, um, what I taught academically was around adipose derived stem cells. And so, you know, there's a lot of, you know, chatter always about PRP and those are stem cells from blood. And typically they're not the ones we want. The ones we want come from marrow or in this case, what I'm talking about is fat. So basically when we were taking care of oncology patients and cosmetic patients, we were trying to master the use of fat and fat works extremely well in those areas where you've had fat loss. So if you were doing a facelift on someone who was really drawn, had really lost fat, you would fat graft them at that time. Mm -hmm. Conservatively in the deeper compartments, and that would really help them from an overall standpoint. And the things about adipose derived stem cells is they differentiate, and then parts of what's called the stromal vascular fraction is is transferred as well. So you really get a nice mixture of growth factors and stem cells that will help the face heal. And so when I do these no cut treatments, I typically am not doing anything with fat. I use as my growth factor substitute exosomes. So I apply those on the surface when I'm done. And I've been very happy with the healing response, the decrease in redness, and it has a lot of control. I always like max control of things and to limit donor sites when I can, because okay. then recovery is decreased, which everybody wants. Every, everybody wants me to, you know, do scarless, beautiful things with no downtime. So right. that's my, uh, that's my lifelong pressure. Uh, so exercise will be in that respect for sure. Okay. Yeah, I had wondered about the fat, the fat component too, how you get that volume back even after you pull. But I guess once you pull everything tight, it, you, it, you don't like notice you the loss more. of volume, right? You look like you have more volume. That's the beauty of this is when I did the, uh, most of my clients are out of state. And so I was doing a, a follow-up <laughs> via Zoom and he's like, my face looks fuller, right? So it's doing, like you said, people confuse lifting with vector. Mm-hmm right? Your face ages this way. It doesn't age this way. Right. You know, pulling things back is not the vector of aging. It's, it's down. Right. But when you tighten around it, the, re the remaining fat that you have in your face looks enhanced without enhancing the fat in your face. Yeah. So that's you, you play with house money when you can do that. Yeah. So as long as you control that laxity, it's less of a volume situation. So it goes back to what I like. I always like to tighten before I fill anyway. And I don't 
I don't have a, I'm not a fan of fillers. I use revance from, it, it's a Swiss filler, but it stretches with you. So when you animate, it's not static. Okay. So when you right. smile, areas you volumize, follow basically how your face moves. So it looks natural. It's not like you have two things stuck on your face. Right. These two big balls on your cheeks. Yeah. No, we've all seen that. I try never to do things that, you know, don't give a more enhanced natural appearance or try to make them look more natural. So if they lost a little volume, that's fine. But really, I always am trying to convince folks that if the issue is really laxity, then let's try to find the best combination therapy to help you with laxity and it's not really one thing like everybody comes in oh i want a facelift like okay i know you think that's what you want <laughs> let's figure uh, out what you need in reality if you have a lot of laxity that i can't control another way then yes i can i can do that but if it's mild to moderate laxity and they don't like their jowl or they don't like their neck or i have minimally invasive ways to treat all those to get you a very nice natural appearance that i can then you know, just like a sculptor works with stone or, or play or whatever they're doing, you can keep molding that over time because now these things allow me to adjust the skin versus before I never could. You couldn't really adjust skin tightness. Now you actually can. That's very exciting. And the company's producing a product that I can use around the eyes, which to me, like I do all this, so everybody understands like this is not something that you want done in five minutes in a in the back of an office. No. So no. It's a full basic OR setup in my place here in Austin. And I wear, uh, today I videoed a bunch of it. So I have a headlight on, I have loop magnification, and I'm looking exactly where I'm going all the time so that these rows are tight and you maximize what you're removing. Because if you're going to do it, you want me to be aggressive and take out the skin. Right. And then you'll have the best tightening result, which, yep. you know, nobody comes in my office and says, hey, can you make me looser and fatter? Yeah, exactly. Very true. Uh, everybody's Very like, true. you know, can you make everything tighter? And can you take this out? And so, like, those areas that always stigmatize patients when they come in and tell me, like I said, it's knees, arms, of course, necks and jowls and jaw lines, hands eyes love it uh, those are all like tricky areas to treat yeah but, you don't uh, just want the the plastic I surgeon down the street it's like biohacking i make biohackers look silly yeah absolutely absolutely you do you change the outside just like you can affect the inside especially now with the things that we have available now and they're getting better all the time half my devices have ai in them but this one's still, you know, me doing the work, but it's great. It's fun that's, to do. That's so awesome. Well, Dr. Rob Whitfield, thank you so much for jumping on today because this has just been fascinating, kind of outside the box for my listeners, but definitely in line with all things anti-aging and just taking care of yourself in general. So, of course, we're going to have all the links for people to come see you as you get a flood of people coming in wanting to anti-age. But- where can verbally tell people where they can find you and maybe see some of these results? Right. Now, for this particular multimodal therapy, this is going to be on my Instagram handle, D-R-O-B-S Solutions. So Dr. Rob Solutions. That's what you need to follow on Instagram. We'll be showing this in videos and the YouTube channel ultimately will reflect all of this uh, for everybody seeking anti-aging therapy. That's where this is going to be housed. Mm -hmm. Love it. Love it. Well, thank you once again. Obviously, this is a surgery day for you. So thank you for popping in to record because this is important stuff to get out there. So I appreciate your time. I appreciate you having me on. Good to see you.